You might be wondering which Linux distro is best for your computer or laptop. Dean to get baffled why there are so many Linux distros out there. You know, out of many, Manjaro and Ubuntu are one of the most well-liked Linux distributions which are made for beginners. Now, these distros give a niche experience to an end user. Linux is open source. It's designed to be customizable. That's why so many distributions are available to an end user and offer a wide variety of things. It's notable that not every Linux distro delivers stable, secure, and robust user experience. Hey guys, my name is Kiyos Kirel. In this video, we're going to see what are the differences between Manjaro and Ubuntu. Let's get started. Ubuntu comes with a Ubiquiti installer. It is very easy to use for beginners. The upcoming installer for feature releases of Ubuntu is written using Flutter and looks visually impressive. Compared to Ubiquiti, Manjaro ships with a Calamares installer. It's the most popular Linux installer out there that speeds up the installation and provides an elementary user interface which is easy to understand. I like the way Calamates has been designed. It shows more information about the partitions and file systems in a visual format. And that's why advanced users always consider Calamates as the best installer for a Linux operating system. Both Ubuntu and Manjaro are dependent OSs. Ubuntu is a Debian-based Linux distribution and Manjaro is based on Arch Linux. Debian and Arch are the primary Linux distros that are built from scratch. That's why most of the distros are built on top of either Debian, Arch or Red Hat. Ubuntu is built on top of the Debian stable branch. Most of the software you download from APT is rigorously tested before public release. Manjaro is the opposite of that and most of the packages are updated from time to time. This comes with a cost of both pros and cons. Ever since Ubuntu relinquished the Unity desktop, they started shipping GNOME as the default desktop in their latest releases. Ubuntu uses the customized version of the GNOME desktop and you may see a few tweaks added to the desktop. Other flavors of Ubuntu include Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Xbuntu, and Mate which offer different styles of desktop experience. Speaking of Manjaro, it is also available in multiple editions that include GNOME, KDE Plasma, and XFCE. All these editions are officially supported by the Manjaro team. This way, when there are any updates available from GNOME or KDE, they will update the distro within a few months. One of the main parts of any Linux distro is the kernel. It's the heart of Linux that acts as a bridge between hardware and software. Ubuntu uses an LTS kernel, which means it's tested thoroughly before it gets released to the public. Non-LTS uses the latest kernel and won't work well with older hardware. On the other side, Manjaro gives a full control to a user to customize the hardware. This way, you can install multiple kernels using the hardware configuration tool. Now, switching between the kernels is easy breezy. You can install a custom kernel in Manjaro by keeping the stable kernel aside. This way, if something goes wrong, you can fall back to the default kernel. Ubuntu is based on Debian and uses apt and apt-get. On the other side, Manjaro is Arch-based and uses Pacman. Apt and Pacman are the main differences between Manjaro and Ubuntu. In reality, APT and Pacman are very good package managers. When it comes to packages available in their repositories, 
Pacman outperforms APT. Pacman is very easy to use and has a ton of packages and GUI applications available in the Arch repositories. Most of the popular packages you see in GitHub are added to Arch repositories. For example, bpytop. On the latter, apt or apt-get confuses the user over its usage. I'm not saying apt is bad, it's not reliable compared to pacman. If you're a developer, then pacman is the best package manager and you can install or find a ton of packages. Now, other than the package manager, both distributions offer a default app store that offers many applications to be downloaded. Compared to Ubuntu, out of the box, Manjaro adds support with a flat pack. In addition to that, Manjaro has access to Arch user repository, which opens up access to almost every software that you may not find in Ubuntu's software center. So in terms of the software ecosystem and the package manager, Manjaro Linux does provide many advantages over Ubuntu. Now compared to Manjaro, the Ubuntu LTS release focuses on stability and reliability. That's why it's also used on the server side. On the latter, Manjaro may not be stable out of the box. You may experience some stability and performance issues. When installing any package in Manjaro, you need to be careful and keep an eye on your configurations to ensure that an update does not break your system. As for Ubuntu, you do not need to stress about these software updates, especially when considering the LTS version. The updates should not generally break your system. Ubuntu offers two models, LTS and non-LTS. LTS stands for long-term release. Once you install the LTS version of Ubuntu on your computer, you will receive software updates and security patches for the next 5 years. The non-LTS release is for those who want to experience the latest updates, the desktop environment, kernel, experimental features, and more. The only caveat is that it's only supported for 9 months. Now after that, you need to either update to the LTS or next non-LTS to stay secure. On the latter, Manjaro follows the rolling model. Let's say you want to be the first one to experience the latest features like new desktop environment, kernel, and experimental features, then Manjaro is the one you must try. Using the rolling model, the Manjaro team continuously updates the system as soon as a new fix or patch is available. It's like making your system up to date. That way, once you install Manjaro, you always end up updating the system every week. When it comes to performance, both distros performed very well during my usage. I noticed there is an issue with Ubuntu. The applications that are pre-installed using Snap are refusing to open. After a hustle and struggle, I managed to make it work. The idle RAM usage of Ubuntu is around 800 megabytes. On the latter, Manjaro is using around 900 megabytes. Now keep in mind that both distributions are running the GNOME desktop. Now other than that, I tried running a PSQL server, nodes, and very few apps and both distros, and I would say they performed very well. After running these applications in the background, along with a screen decoder, Ubuntu's RAM usage has jumped to 1.3 GB, and Manjaro's RAM usage was around 1.5 GB. Now, performance-wise, I would like to opt for Manjaro. The launching of applications is very fast and delivers a sustained performance over Ubuntu. 
Overall, I would say if you are a beginner and convinced yourself to use Linux for at least two plus years without reinstalling, then choose Ubuntu. If you want to discover new features and experience the power of Linux, then Manjaro is the one that suits you. And that's pretty much it about the Ubuntu versus Manjaro. So what do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching my video. This has been KSK Ryle. I will see you in my next video. <clears throat> Ice in my veins, I've been driving this train. Years in this lane, there's no stop in this frame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight